Standing here outside of U.S. Bank Arena getting ready for the big Trump rally tomorrow and Randall has arrived a full 24 hours, actually more than 24 hours early and he's, uh, he may end up living here for the rest of his life. He's actually <laughs> built himself a, a, a nice home. Randall, what is all this? Well, this is uh, what we call our Trump's Front Row Joe uh, setup. We uh, try and get to most of the rallies and when we get here, we get here early and then uh, we have our friends that we met throughout the campaign and through the presidential run that he's had. Uh, so a lot of these people we met at a different rally and then we say, well, let's meet up again. And so we become- I friends. love that. I love that. So this, okay, so you do a lot of rallies. This would be my 53rd one. What? <laughs> yeah. You've been to 53 Trump rallies? The first Trump rally I went to, there was 200 of us there. Wow. And I left there saying, oh, this guy is something special. You know, the neatest thing that I liked about it though was because when we went in there, he wasn't asking for money. He had shirts, t-shirts for us. He had uh, winter stocking caps for us. Didn't ask for a penny for us. All he wanted to do was get our vote. But he wanted to, wanted to have our trust. He wanted to earn our respect and trust. I said, this guy is not a politician. He's not a polytech. And so I went to my second one and then the third one. And then it kind of became an addiction. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, in 2015, I was calling Trump some names too, but it wasn't special back then. <laughs> I mean, I just love the fact that he puts the truth out there, puts the facts, and the mainstream media just go, oh, that's squealing. It's well, squealing. I want to ask you about that. I want to ask you about that because I walked over here, and you recognized me. Yep. Your eyes lit up. You came over. I think you gave me a big hug. You were so excited. Yep. Now, I'm a gay man, so why aren't you trying to kill me? Because <laughs> that CNN what? told me that you, yeah, yeah. you hate me. Yeah. So I'm confused. I know. Isn't that amazing? It's just like my buddy Ramon there. He's from Minnesota. He rode down with me, okay? Okay, me and him rode together in the same car, you know. You didn't, his, and you didn't try to kill him? I didn't try to kill him, but his family, his family was worried that he was, wasn't coming home because he was riding with a Trump person. But he loves Trump. He's really, he's an astute young man. Yeah. Very, very strong. I mean, this is awesome. We are nothing like what the media wants to portray us. We're not. We're Why not is right the media now. doing that? Because they're part of that deep state. They, they need to keep that narrative going and that we're bad people. That, you know, if they came out and came to these love fests and told what what a joy it is, okay? These people, you know, I don't know that family, but when they came here, we got to know them because I knew since they were coming, I knew three things right away about them. Number one, I knew that they loved our country. Number two, I know they love our president. And three, I know they bleed one color. They bleed the color red, white, and blue. That's one color. And by then, when we go into the rally tomorrow, we're going to be real good friends because we're going to be having a hang out, hung out a long time together. So I love that you called it a love fest. The Trump yeah. rally is a love fest. It's an absolute love fest. And then I just want to say thank you for everything you're doing. You know, God bless you. I mean, you know what? We believe one color. We, we believe in one thing, our country, and we believe one color, red, white, and blue. And that's what's beautiful about it. I'm so happy. <laughs> Can I have a hug? I would love to give you a hug, buddy. God bless you, brother. Thanks, man. You. Great talking with you. Yeah, Thank you. Standing here with Ramon, who just approached me, and we started getting into a semi-robust conversation. I said, you know what? Before we go any further, Ramon, let's do this on camera. So uh, tell me, uh, tell me, tell everybody what you were just asking me. Uh, I was asking if you thought that the African American had come around to Trump, you know, to where they wouldn't feel that he was racist and believe everything that the news say, you know, because it's, it's just wrong, you know, that they can do that to somebody, but, you know, they get away with it, but I, you know, I know eventually, you know, the truth is going to come out, and, you know, that's why, you know, from the day that Trump started, you know, I felt like, you know, he was the right person, you know, he, you know, he was already rich, you know, he had no reason, to, you know, to go in there and try to steal or scam or anything, you know, and, you know, that's why I voted for him. My answer to that question is yes, I do think it will continue to happen. I think it's already happening. In Walkaway Campaign, we see testimonials all the time from people of all races who are waking up, telling their stories about why they're walking away. But as I see it, there are really two major challenges that we're facing here, which is the liberal media that's lying to these communities constantly, telling them that Trump and his supporters and everyone else are just racist and wish to do them harm. And the other thing is groupthink, that in, uh, you know, racial groups, LGBT, any kind of minority groups in America, these stories are getting recirculated. I, you know, LGBT people are telling LGBT people, don't vote Trump, Trump's a bad guy. Black people are telling other black people don't. It's gonna take, I think, people like you, people like me, people who are bold and who will stand up and say, hey guys, that's not true. 
that's not what's going on. Like, listen to what I have to say or consider it an alternative point of view because the media is not telling you the truth and we're just passing around bad information that's designed to scare us. And that, the reason why they do it, the reason why they want to scare us is because they want to control how we're thinking and how we're behaving and how we're voting. I mean, that's ultimately what it comes down to. So if we can break those cycles and break those chains, then I think anything's possible. I mean, black people love good ideas. Black people want to succeed. They want to thrive just like anybody else. Exactly. But like, like you said, you know, you got to you got to break the narrative. Because like, just, like you said, the same story circulate. You know, one, you know, you get influencers on Facebook that say Trump's bad. And everybody, you know, all they people believe he's bad, you know, because they're looking at, you know, well, if Carney V said he's bad, he must be bad, you know. doesn't make it true, you know. It, it's just, it's just you know, bad information circulated, like you said, and, and nobody really searched for it themselves even anymore, even though they got cell phones right at the ready, you know, nobody won't even take the time to, you know, to look to see what, you know, if any of this is true or if it makes any kind of sense, they just go right. off whatever the news say. If the news say it, they believe it. That's straight right there, you know. Well, CNN said it, Don Lemon said it, but that, that don't make them, them guys get paid by somebody and they're paid to say, what you know that don't mean that don lemon you know believes this you know but he can get up there and pretend he do you know all it's time. propaganda of course 100 percent propaganda made like you said to control your mind if you control people's mind you can get them to do anything you want you know as long as you got the mind you know if they got your mind you know they can keep you in the projects they can keep you in poverty you know because it'd be your thinking you know and did you vote in 2016 yes i did i voted for trump you did that's right and i'm voting for him again Now, how have you been treated by fellow Trump supporters? Great, man. Now, you know, I don't, you know, the race card to me is just, man, you, you overuse it so much. Everybody's not racist. You know, I always tell people, you know, when I look at this stuff, I look at it on a big scale, you know. If, you know, if you look at everybody in America, right, and you got, you know, 20,000 murders on a big scale, you know, it seems bad, but really it's not, you know, not to me, not when you're looking at 46 billion people, right. you know, but you can highlight a few of those and blow them up to be whatever you want. You know, you can make it look racist. The police are killing black people. Look at it. We got this police just killed this black guy right here, you know, right. and they only tell you part of the story. And when they tell you part of the story, you don't even know the whole story, but they do. And then, then they'll tell you part of the story, running on their networks, get everybody riled up. You know, black people are angry. Hey, they killed him for no reason, you know, and they'll start to believe that, you know, everybody, yep, the police killed him for no reason. Nobody knows the truth. And then when they go to court and the court hears the truth, you see they, you know, the officer's not guilty and then everybody's mad. Oh, that was racist. You know, they let him out. No, they went to court and they heard the truth and, the, you know, the jury did what was right, you know. You know, I, I've always thought it was a, a pretty bizarre thing that liberals, I feel like, in their quest to protect what they consider to be victimized uh, uh, groups and, and communities actually oftentimes end up doing a lot more harm than good because uh, liberals would love you to believe that we should wage a war on cops because cops want to harm and kill black people. Meanwhile, what they've really accomplished is many police uh, uh, backing off from black communities for that very reason, and now more black people are in danger because their communities aren't being policed well. Of course, that's exactly what it is. You know, police are afraid to, you know, to do their jobs because if something happens, they're going to be called racist, no matter if they're justified or not, you know. And that, like I said, that's not a good thing, you know, because I've never looked at the police as bad, you know. It's, it's, it's going to be some bad people in any group, whether that's a police department, you know, whether that's Congress, you know. But, you can't say that every single police officer is bad, you know, because of, a, you know, somebody got killed in Missouri or some one guy got killed in Minnesota. You can't make all cops bad because of that, you know, until you see the whole picture, you know. And it's actually very rare that the police, you know, you know, kill, you know, black people. But like I said, this whole country in two states it could happen and they'll make it like it's everywhere. It's all 51 right. states. Yeah. You know, and it's like, hey, man, that was one state, one neighborhood, and, you know, a special, you know, situation. And no, it wasn't. It was, it's every state's like that. Cops hit black people everywhere. You they want you, they want you going, is he a white supremacist? Is he a white supremacist? Is he a white supremacist? He wants, I mean, that's no way to live. I was going to say, that's a dumb way to live. You will be, you know, in that case, you're in fear all the time. You know, my cousin, he tells me, you know, you know, white supremacy is on the rise. I saw that, you know. And I'm like, so, and he's like, yeah, so when you go to that Trump, you're out of, you better be careful because them white people go try to kill you. And this fool really believes this shit, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, he really believes that shit, seriously. It's like, dude, you really believe this shit? You think I'm going to go, you think I'm going to be killed, you know? Yeah, you got to watch out, you know? And if you do make it out, and it's like, and it's sad that this man is 50-something years old and he believes this stupid-ass right. shit. You know, you too old.
You're a black man, I'm a gay man. Can I give you a hug, American to American? Oh, yeah, of course, man. Yeah. Have a great time at the rally tomorrow. Yeah, you too, man. Thanks. Good talking with you, buddy. Thanks. Talking with Sherry, who's out here in Cincinnati the day before the Trump rally. First of all, why'd you come out early? Because I wanted to be in line first. I want to be in that arena. I want to be close to my president and show him that I love him more than anything on this earth. It doesn't sound like you're very enthusiastic about Trump. Oh my gosh, I love him so much. I've loved him for 30 years. I've watched him for 30 years and was praying for him to run for president. And when he first announced, I went to work where uh, my ex-boss was running for Senate. And I said at that time, he goes, oh, did you see Trump's running for president? I said, yeah, and he's going to win. And he looked at me, he goes, and he gives a snort to my other boss. And he goes, do you hear her? He, and he said, what? And he said, she said Trump's going to win the presidency. And they just snickered. I said, well, we'll see, won't we? <laughs> Sherry knows how to pick a winner. Yes, I do. Yeah. And Trump is my winner. He is saving our country. If Tell it me about for it. Him, if it was not for Trump, then the world would have taken over. That's what they were trying to do is make it one world country. And Trump is the first one to come along and say, no, America has to come first. When I hear all these billions of dollars being sent to other countries, why? When we need it here. We have people that we need to take care of. Why are we not taking care of Americans? Now, I, don't, I believe in helping everybody. I want to help everybody. Yep. And if there's somebody in another country we can help, but at, not at our expense, I'm all for that. But Americans have to come first. We have children that are starving. Oh, CNN loves to tell us all that. We're all racists and bigots. Yeah. Yeah, and xenophobes and yeah, the, the whole, yeah, all of it. Yeah. Rand yeah. Phobes. Yeah, yes. Uh, Xenophobic, we are. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm a deplorable. A proud deplorable. Yes, but we come to these rallies. I've been to a couple myself. I see black Trump supporters. I see Hispanic Trump supporters. I'm a gay Trump supporter. I see Americans of all types here. But CNN doesn't want the world to know that or understand that or believe they it. Don't. No, they do not. Why? Because then people will wake up to what our country, what our government's been doing to us. It's very important that they make... Uh, minorities believe they're not wanted on the right because they want them to stay dependent on our government so that they keep electing these morons into office that are doing nothing for them right. they don't want people to know the truth they're trying to hide the truth don't you I don't want to put words in your mouth but do you feel like you would like to see minorities in this country wake up, embrace their individual identity, embrace the, the empowerment that they have here in this country and thrive in America? Yes, embrace what we offer and look around at what Trump is trying to offer them and all of us. And, and it has nothing to do with the pigmentation of your skin, nothing. Do you welcome black people, brown people, LGBT people over here on the right? Anybody, anybody. anybody. If you will be an American, I welcome you. And if you don't like Trump, that's okay. If you don't you don't like that he's not politically correct, that's what I love about him. I'm sick of the politically correct. Right. It's it's out of hand. He says what we want to say. As you mentioned earlier, we still have people in this country who are struggling. We still have a lot of problems of our own right here in the United States we need to take care of. Why are the Democrats trying to bring anybody and everybody over the border and tell them that this is a free for all in this country for anyone who wants to come here? Free health care, free education, free whatever. You don't even have to live here. Why are they doing this? Votes. That's all I can think of. Why else would they? Why? So why are they not opening up their homes? Why not open your doors? Listen, you, I've got some kids out here. They're starving. Open your doors. Let them in your home. Feed them. Why are you not doing that? But no, we want to let everybody else come in. You can't do that. A home only has so much room. We can only take care of so many people. Right now, we need to take care of Americans. When we have extra room, bring them in. You know, there seems to be a lot of hypocrisy coming from the left, I feel like. Uh, even if you listen to certain celebrities who are you know, preaching gun control, uh, anti-Second Amendment. They're traveling around the world with armed bodyguards. Exactly. What do you they think about walls that? Around, they have walls around their homes, which they say walls aren't effective. Well, then tear them down. They want to take away our guns because, you know, we're, it's, it's just not safe. Well, why are all these happening in gun-free zones? You know, Cher, Bette Midler, some of these big stars have been tweeting a lot lately. They call the president racist. They think he's a really bad guy. They think that uh, border security is our racist measures. They think that the country should be open to all. Do you think that if Cher or Bette Midler or anyone threw a party in their gated home with their armed security <laughs> and let's say a bunch of 
uninvited. You think I'd be able to get in? No. But that's not fair because you might want to enjoy her, her nice house. You might want to enjoy her food and all the things she's offering her guests. Why shouldn't you be allowed to? Why shouldn't I? I should be, but she won't let us. Because you want it, so you should be allowed to have it. Right, and my feelings. I mean, isn't it all about feelings for them? <laughs> and it hurts my feelings that I'm not allowed to, but they want to take care of the illegals. And they want to make it legal to come in here. Right. Just walk on across the border. What country can you do that in? Can we name one? You know, the effect that having so many illegal immigrants in this country, the detrimental effect, most disproportionately affects low-income black people and low-income Hispanic people. Yep. So the people who are, who are receiving the most detriment mm -hmm. are low-income black and low-income Hispanic Americans by having open borders. Why don't the Democrats care? They don't because they don't love America. And they can already depend on that vote. Exactly. It's all about votes. It's about, actually, it's about power and money. It's all about power and money. You, if we don't put term limits on and get rid of some of these people, or if people don't wake up and start voting some of these morons out, it's just going to continue. Trump is the one that's in there getting rid of them. Have you heard of the walkaway campaign? I have. I've watched you. I've followed what you. What do you think about it? I love you. I think you're so awesome. I think you're so awesome. Oh, I think you are just... I didn't even make her say that. No. <laughs> when, I, when they said that you were over there, I went ballistic. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So it's already on Facebook. Amazing. Sorry. Are you excited about tomorrow? I am so excited. I can hardly contain myself. Keep your eyes peeled. You never know where I'm going to pop up. I will watch. Thank you for everything See you, tomorrow. you do. Bye, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you for the interview. You're welcome. You're talking to the right guy. I was a homeless vet for seven years. And under Trump's administration, I went from homeless to homeowner. It's not much. I just it's, got it's not much. But you know what? It's my place. It's a, it's a little rundown trailer. But to me, it's I, you can trade me the Taj Mahal, and I'd still keep what I got. Amazing. Sorry. That just kind of, like, hit me right here. Um... Is this your first Trump rally? <laughs> no, no. How many have you been to? Number uh, for Trump rallies, 26, and I've done three Mike Pence rallies. Uh, met the uh, vice president three times. Actually, I uh, carry his challenge coin and mine sits in, in the White House. You know, the liberal media doesn't even ask the question, is Donald Trump a racist or a bigot? Are his followers racist or bigots? They just say, I mean, the questions that they ask now, even at the debate, are given Donald Trump's bigotry, what do you intend to do about dot, dot, dot? How does that make you feel as a Trump supporter? Where is this coming from? Do you consider yourself a racist, a bigot, homophobic? Uh, let me see. My favorite aunt, who's God rest her soul, was a lesbian. And she had the greatest impact in my life. I'm biracial. I'm quartered Native American Indian. So for me being a, for me being a racist or a bigot, eh, I'd, be hating, I'd be a self-hating person. <laughs> This is what's so, I think, remarkable at this point is where we are in America today. You know, I grew up in a tiny little town in Nebraska, a tiny little farm town. And all of my uh, dad's side of the family is farmers, ranchers, and they all still live in that little community. And I just went back for the 4th of July to spend time with my family. And so I'm looking there at the generations. Now we've got, uh, you know, my grandmother now has grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren. And my grandmother's great-great-grandchildren are black mixed race. I mean, there were as many black cousins as white cousins in my family. And I think that's kind of what America looks like now and is like. But for some reason, the media wants to make it seem like the entire country between the two coasts are just a bunch of racist, bigoted white people who don't know black people, who don't know brown people, and who hate them and wish to do them harm. What is, what is this all about? Um, it's just scare tactics. It is the, it is the Democrats. They are, they're afraid that the story's getting out that you know that we are that we are not a party of Paul of hate. That the Midwest is probably one of the most diverse places. Ken, good talking with you. Have a good time tomorrow at the rally. Actually, would it, would it you be, just might see me. Would it be possible to get a selfie with you? One hundred percent. Awesome. <laughs> right, let's do it. We're not on yet. We're not on okay. yet. Standing here in line for the Trump campaign in Cincinnati, I met Kevin Farmer. Yes, sir. Kevin Farmer from Cincinnati. I'm out here. Doing my entrepreneurial thing. Actually, we got keep America great again because we always wanted to keep it to stand straight great again. We got my man over here with the bullhorn who's supporting, trying to get haters off the stage. And definitely, if you want to get more information, go to www.bybydms.com because that's the only way we can get ourselves back on the right track. Because we got to get so many people who's not for us out of 
us. <laughs> yeah, you got it. That's you made these. Uh, yes, we actually made these. We get them done. We got them done locally. Definitely come and support. Made you look promotions. We actually giving. Uh, we're actually selling these for twenty dollars today for at over here at U.S. Bank Arena for the um, uh, for his victory. For his, I call it a victory speech because he already. I feel like he's already gonna have this in the bag because they don't have no serious opponent that has any valid issues or any valid. Uh, plan. meaning plan to be able to do anything so I definitely feel like this is more like a victory speech and a resolution to be able to show how we gonna how he's gonna overcome to take over 2020 election. how can people order some of your, your gear right now this is gonna be hands-on engaging so we're doing a lot of canvassing out here definitely getting people aware and outreaching to the public to let them know that keeping America great again and buying a hat to show it is the number one thing to do right now website yeah www ByeByeDems.com. Remember, www.ByeByeDems.com. That's ByeByeDems.com. Good to meet you, Kevin. Thanks a lot, buddy.